Hello Force Will fans, it's me, J Ruler. I bet you probably thought that I died. Some of you may or may not have been excited by that prospect, but I am here to tell you for one, that I am certainly not dead. Two, I am here to continue the most valuable Force of Will cards series, thanks to TCG Scrubs. Thank you very much guys for allowing me to do this. Uh, I am not playing Force of Will right now, but I am still following the, the prices, I'm still following the cards, I'm looking at all the spoilers. Uh, you know, not, not the time or place to discuss that, but I may come back uh, into playing at a later time. But I wanted to continue this series, TCG Scrubs asked me to continue this series, you guys seem to have liked it, so we will continue with March 2018. We're going to be looking at the top 10 most valuable Force of Will cards, and I must say that I am pretty excited on this one. I, I was pleasantly surprised on some of the values of these, and uh, thankfully I have a, I, and many of these, I have multiple copies of these cards on this top 10 list. And before we take a look at that, as always guys, we need to get a few caveats out of the way, a few reminders. So while you're watching this video, or any of the past or future top 10 videos for prices I'm going to be doing, uh, these are always going to be the case. First up, all prices assessed are on March 1st, 2018 in this video, so if you are watching at different times on different days, the prices may be different. Two, all prices are quoted in US dollars, the good old greenback. Three, all prices reflect the TCGplayer.com market price on the date of assessment. So I guarantee you right now, if you look these cards up, you will find different prices from different sellers at different times. We're talking about the market price. It is a trailing average, which gives us a better picture, especially month to month as we look over the continuation of this series, exactly where the price movements are. And for all prices, reflect the lowest rarity for a given card. So there's one exception on this list to that, but it is typically the non-foil, non-full art version of the card in the original set in which it was released. So let's go ahead guys and dive in starting with number 10 and we will count our way down to number one. Up first we have Cheshire Cat, the Grinning Remnant at $8.46. Boy, do I remember when I first started playing Force Will when this was in New Frontiers and Cheshire Cats were bouncing around between uh, about $20, $24 a pop and I bought them when they finally reached maybe $15, $16 I bought a playset which is <laughs> a, a lot to start getting into the game but back then it was definitely worth it. Uh, the, the value of this has dropped lower like 4 or $5 in the previous few months and it's creeping back up, um, most likely due to the fact that Wanderer events are actually being uh, done now at GPs. So the more support that Wanderer gets, certainly the more valuable this card will get. I It will probably never go back up to $20 or more, or probably even $12 or more would be my prediction. It's still solid, still obviously good, but there are better first turn plays. Like back when this came out, you know, this was all the rage in New Frontiers, it was the first turn play. You, you played four Cheshire Cats in your deck uh, because it was the best first turn play when you were doing, you know, the whole Turbo Gwyber bullshit that they used to do back then that was the number one deck. So you had to have a play set of these and of course, you know, the, the demand drives the price. So number 10, Cheshire Cat, $8.46. Number nine, we have Gil Al Hamat at $9.66. Now I want to say in front of you is not exactly the card that we are assessing in this. It is actually the full art version from the booster pack, Return of the Dragon Emperor. So just imagine that this is the full art version. That is the lowest, the, the lowest rarity from the booster pack, $9.66. I was surprised to see this uh, still on the list. One of my favorite rulers from uh, when I was playing recently, and it's very good to see this card still represented on the list. A lot of potential, yeah, access to all the attributes that you would need for all the great ancient magic spells. Fantastic ruler, great toolbox, great control. 
Moving on to number eight, we have Little Red Fairy Tale of Air from Vin Golf 3 at $9.72. Quite pricey, quite pricey, especially your decks that you're gonna be playing this, you're gonna be multiplying this by, by four. You're, you're gonna wanna place that if you don't have one and you wanna use it. It's not like some of the rulers on this list where you only need to have one. So you're paying almost $40 for a full play set of this card. Absolutely fantastic play for any win deck. Which seems to be quite popular these days in Force of Will, you know, the Force of Wind name bouncing around and whatnot. But Little Red Fairy Tale of Air number eight, $9.72. Moving on to number seven, we have Pandora. Pandora, Guardian of the Sacred Temple at $10.44. I actually can't imagine why. Uh, I mean, Pandora is cool, great character design, a fun deck to play, a fun deck to play against. Not all that useful, not all that powerful, but still at number 7 at $10.44. Not a terrible price for that. On to number 6, My Girl Zero, Six Age of Light, Zero, Master of the Magic Saber. As I predicted rightly, this card would stay on the top 10 list throughout Lapis Cluster's run through New Frontiers. It's really hard to imagine a ruler like Zero not being useful. The ability to pump up resonators that you control, the ability to strip keyword abilities from your opponents, J slash resonators, I mean, when is that not good? Unless they made a mathematically superior card to this that's, that did essentially what this card did, but better with better stats or cheaper costs or more effects. Unless they made a mathematically superior card, it's hard to see how this Zero Ruler could not be useful in any format. Like, whether or not it's being played right now, it's always playing, like, in, in the passenger seat. Like, it's always ready to jump in and be the counter meta deck at any given time. One of my all-time favorite rulers. Absolutely awesome. $13.12, number six. On the number five, we have Freyla. Freyla the Revolutionist at $16.73. That's a pretty decent price for this card. Again, I think the popularity of this card as, as a character makes the price higher than its usefulness as a ruler in the current meta. Now, whether or not Freyla becomes more powerful in the future as they reveal more Dark Elf support that's yet to be seen, but from what I've gathered in recent events looking at top lists, Freyla's really not dominating any corner of the metagame. Maybe your local corner of the metagame, but certainly not on the national or international stage, but that's a pretty decent price for a ruler at $16.73. Number four, the card that everyone loves to hate, Severing Winds at $16.97. That is a very hurtful cost for new players especially. Uh, if you're going to play Severing Winds, I mean, I've seen decks, you know, IU decks obviously gonna run one. Uh, I've seen, I've run decks myself that had as few as two. A lot of times you're paying, playing a full playset of four of these. Uh, so just multiply that $17 cost by four. And if you're a new player, that's a very discouraging price to pay. But hey, it's not as bad as playing Magic the Gathering, right? It could, it could be worse. So console yourselves, new players, or people who don't have a full playset yet, who aspire to get a full playset of Severing Winds, which you should, if you're gonna play Force of Will. Console yourself in the fact that it could be worse in games like Magic the Gathering. At number three, we have Lumia the Faded Rebirth and Lumia Saint of the Crimson Lotus. When I started this series months ago, Lumia was always on the top 10. I believe she's always been in the top three, usually in the number one or number two spot, but still solid number three at $20.29, a ruler that I was playing uh, right up until recently. The ability to remove your resonators from the game and put them back into play and get their enter effects over and over and over again is the name of the game with Lumia. It is so much fun. If you're looking for a ruler to play, especially if you're newer and you're not sure where to start, invest, you know, 20 odd dollars in getting one of these. It will make your day. If there's one thing about Force of Will I miss right now, it is playing a Lumia deck. Awesome character, awesome ability, pretty decent price. I think that's, that's a fair price to pay. You only need one copy of it. And if you want to jump into a trading card game, you know the most expensive card in your deck is typically a ruler. Paying 20 bucks, not too bad, guys. And if you want to sell one, that's not too bad either, you know? 20 bucks is 20 bucks. On the number two, I couldn't believe this. I have two of these uh, that I may <laughs> sell now on eBay. 
Well, sir, the Archmage, well, sir, King of Demons, $37.76. The current going rate is actually higher than, than $37.76 right now on TCGplayer.com. But again, this is the market average. I cannot believe it's like over $40 in current prices for well, sir, the Archmage. I haven't seen any like really good convincing well, sir, decks. But apparently, uh, there must be a problem with like the, the distribution of this card, uh, or it, it's just one of those characters that's really popular and people want it, you know, to have the card and not necessarily for its uh, play value as of current. Or maybe, you know, this is a sign that this card is being bought out because there's, you know, realized future potential going forward. Either way, if you've got one, consider yourself lucky. If you don't have one, tread carefully in purchasing this card because you know, TC, the TCG market is very, very fickle. It could change overnight. A card like this could get banned. It could get er errata. Someone could realize a new uh, counter to it, and you know the prices could drop. Or they could go the other way if you know new strategies are realized or or new errata that buff it, make it more powerful. It's just, it's so it's like the stock market. It, it just goes everywhere. So be careful. And last up, our number one card for March 2018. This one really surprised me. Ayu Lunar Swordswoman, Ayu Shaman Swordswoman, $47.31. That's insane. That's not an Uber or anything, guys. It's just the plain Jane, albeit full art. That that's what they do now with their rulers. It's just a plain Jane card from the booster pack. This is the the one ruler I really wanted to get when I bought uh, when I split a case of Advent of the Demon King with with your boy Sacred Beats and I was very lucky to get it and I'm glad that I do if I do decide to jump back into the game I'm playing IU guys at first I shat all over it on our podcast and then I decided you know there's actually some merit to this and I started tinkering around before I, I was in before it was cool guys I was the hipster when it came to IU and I realized the error of my ways and it's such a fun deck to play and it's it's good to see IU be vindicated as as just an amazing is it's the ultimate toolbox deck because you can only have one copy of each card in your deck and it's just so fun to play and there's so many variations I'm, I'm actually really glad to see that this card is so far up there in terms of price and that it's at the top of the list I absolutely love IU if you have one just like with Welser you know get on your knees right now and thank the TCG gods for favoring you so if you don't have one Curse the TCG gods uh, for what they have done to ruin your life. And that concludes our top 10 list for March 2018. I will be back in April to do the same treatment. And then we will also track the movements in the market over that time. Before I wrap this video up, guys, I want to thank TCG Scrubs for allowing me to get onto their YouTube channel and hopefully not fuck it up too bad. And I also want to quickly plug my own game, Darkest Days World War II card game, which is about to release its newest set on March 16th, 2018 called Against the Tide. And you can check out all the details on darkestdayscg.com. We'll put a link to the website and also to the Darkest Days YouTube channel so you can learn more about it in the video description. If you guys like TCGs, if you like free TCGs, if you like World War II, if you like fast strategy, if you like not having to pay out the ass for cards because it is on Lackey, with regular sets released every other month and bonus sets in between. Please check out Darkest Days, guys. DarkestDaysCG.com. It's on Lackey CCG, which I know a lot of you play. Free plugin, free game, absolutely no cost. And with that, I will talk to you guys in April. Don't forget to rate and share this video if you liked it, and subscribe to the TCG Scrubs channel. There's some pretty nifty dudes.